What's going on YouTube? It's your boy Sky High. Welcome to another edition of Random World of Sky. Today, I'm going to uh, review this NXT that came on Tuesday night. And let's just say it was of epic proportions. As you can see, I um, got the stone cold look. Bald head goatee. So, uh, I usually when I cut my hair I just chop it right on off it grows back fast but anyway um, so the July 15th edition of NXT <sighs> I'm pretty excited to talk about it because if you watch the state of wrestling video I put out a couple of days ago you would know that I was just pretty fed up with the uh, firings and the bad wrestling I was pretty fed up with a lot of shit, to be honest with you. But, boy oh boy did I get a surprise when I was watching this NXT. So first thing first, uh, I'm going to go ahead and put the picture up right beside me. Right here. Somewhere in here. You see it. Samoa Joe's back. <laughs> That's right. The Samoan Submission Machine is back on NXT. And as you can see from the picture, he's face to face with Cross. What happened was, excuse me, William Regal came out to kick off NXT. Thought he was going to retire. You know, he's choking up, uh, talking about past experiences, his childhood. And then Cross comes out, says this was, he knew this was going to happen. He knew he was going to retire. Then out of all of that, as soon as William Regal is about to say something on the mic, Joe's music hits, and I go cr absolutely crazy. Now, first, William Regal's still going to retire, and he's saying that Samoa Joe can take his spot. Joe's saying, mm-mm, not going to do that. Instead, he makes a um, suggestion to William Regal that maybe since when Samoa Joe was in NXT, he gave hell to, to uh, William Regal. It's time to you know, pay back some respect to Regal and be his special enforcer. Because Regal's kind of losing hand in NXT, if you know what I mean. William Regal accepts. Now, Samoa Joe is the enforcer to William Regal. And then that's when the face to face happened between him and Cross. Cross bitches out. You know what I'm saying? And even though Joe can't wrestle, apparently. William Regal said that he's not uh, in any shape or form to be in the ring. But if provoked, he may retaliate. So, uh, the first match uh, after that happened was Imperium versus Brizango. Real decent match. Nothing spectacular. I give it about four stars. Uh, Brizango picked up the win with the roll up, and then after the match, Imperium just blatantly attacked him. You know what I'm saying? Uh, put the flag over top of him and did their stance. And that was pretty much it of that. Um, pretty much the highlights of the show was. Uh, hold on, give me a second. I'm trying to remember the. Uh, the mishaps between uh, Kyle O'Reilly and uh, Adam Cole. They had a backstage argument or whatever, and they got into a big fight in the back. And William Regal was back there trying to break them up. And, of course, who shows up? Samoa Joe. And uh, Adam Cole, you know, he got a little rowdy. Pushed Joe. Joe paused. Took off his coat. And he went bananas. He choked Adam Cole out. Completely choked him out. And he told uh, the officials to tell Adam Cole when he wakes up, come talk to William Regal. And William Regal, in return, tells Kyle O'Reilly and Cole that next week um, they're going to have to pick their opponents to wrestle because at uh, the Great American Bash, which is like a week after next, Adam Cole will fight Kyle O'Reilly in a traditional wrestling match. It's going to be five stars. 
I don't even gotta, you don't even gotta like think if that's gonna be a good match. You know what I'm saying? So, um, yeah, that went down. Which brings me to the next match that the, that I thought was pretty good. Travis, um, what was his name? Kushida had an open challenge for the uh, cruiserweight title, right? And what happens is, uh, you know, the open challenge thing he does, whoever it wants to step up, he step up. So I think his name is Travis Baker. A very well-talented uh, cruiserweight division wrestler who impressed people at the uh, PC, which is the Performance Center. He got his chance tonight. He held his own. Real good match. Couple of half-line spots. It was a little bit of mistakes. Just a little bit. But nothing too major. Of course, Kushida picked up the win. Kyle O'Reilly came out and he said that he wants to challenge Kushida. Not for the belt, though. Just for friendly competition. Next week on NXT, right? So that's that. We still don't know who Cole's partner is. So that's up in the air right now, right? So then, um, also, Io Shirai comes back. And uh, she's about to, you know, she comes in the ring, gets on the mic. Talk about it's good to be back. Uh, she's about to say her next target. Target, and then the way comes out, and you know the way is tag team champions. So the way comes out, and uh, they pretty much trash talk Io Shirai, and then they get in the ring, try to beat Io Shirai down, and lo and behold, Tony Stark comes out. So it's looking like we get uh, Io Shirai and Tony Stark versus the way for the tag team titles. That's looking like a thing. I'm not mad at it, because Tony Stark's a good wrestler, Yo Shirai's a good wrestler. And if they become tag team champions, that'll be even better, right? Um, other than that, uh, oh, so at NXT TakeOver, um, LA Knight beat uh, Cameron... Uh, To the moon, to the moon. Cameron, uh... Wait a minute, wait a minute. Why can't I think of his name? Cameron Grimes. I don't know why I wanted to say Cameron Price. Cameron Grimes got defeated uh, by uh, LA Knight and to win the uh, Million Dollar Championship. So they had a coronation for LA Knight, right? <laughs> Everything was sweet. Everything was great. You know, L.A. Knight was showing his respect to Ted DiBiase. And then the perfect heel moment happens. All that respect goes right the fuck out the window. Because after he gets the belt, Ted DiBiase gives him his hoorah. He hits Ted over the head with a straight punch. And the crowd just boobs. Perfect heel moment for L.A. Knight. And I find L.A. Knight to be a great worker. Great worker, man. Love it. Love everything he's doing right now. My homeboy said he reminds me of uh, the rock, of a young rock with the mannerisms and the way he talks. Eh, I wouldn't go that far, but I could see it a little bit. So that happens, and Cameron Grimes comes out for the save, Ted DiBiase. And Ted DiBiase looks like he's still laughing, even after getting beat up, which was kind of weird to me, because I thought he was supposed to look like he was in pain, but apparently not. It, it was, it was kind of weird. You go back and watch it, you'll see what I'm talking about. And the other highlight to NXT was um, the tag team match between the Grizzled Young Veterans and Timothy Thatcher and Tommaso Ciampa. Knock down, drag them out, kick ass match was pretty much what that was. Um, it was a tornado tag match. Um, all four men in the ring, nothing but chaos. Straight, strong style hits, no pullbacks, all punches, bro. Um, they gave it their all, and um, Tomasa Champa and Thatcher came with the W. So they're probably going to get a future match with MSK um, later on at the next pay-per-view, maybe at the Great American Bash. And yeah, um, that's pretty much all of NXT. But the highlight of it for me was Samoa Joe's back. And I called that to happen. Because they said they seen him working out in the PC. So, him back as an enforcer to William Regal is better than him not being back at all. I'll take it. 
because maybe in the future we might see uh, um, Samoa Joe versus uh, Cameron Cross for the title. I wouldn't be mad at it. Then we got a couple of vignettes from NXT I forgot to talk about. One is the Diamond Mind, who I'm not sure what or who that is. It's probably a group of people, and it looks like it's based around MMA or UFC type gimmick. We'll find that out. Then there was a, a battery symbol during the show, and it started at one percent, and then it got to twenty-one percent. But it wasn't no no writing, no nothing, no talking, no nothing. It was just the battery symbol, and it was just being charged. It went from basically being dead to being all the way charged up. No idea who that could be. Um, not even a slight of idea who that could be. So, hopefully we'll find out about that soon. I want to give a big shout out to Triple H because right now, Triple H, you are shitting on competition. You're shitting on Vince McMahon. Raw and SmackDown are completely trash. AEW and NXT are kind of head to head because, you know, they're both great shows. AEW got the great wrestling. But Triple H has a wrestling mindset and Damn it, the state of the wrestling the, uh, video I did a couple of days ago, basically, it was like he listened to it. Because Joe is back. The storylines are continuing on NXT. We got the Great American Bash coming up. NXT in your house was a complete success. Uh, I, hats off to you, Triple H, Mr. Paul Levisk, Levisk whatever, the, however you say your name. I'm going to call it Triple H, the Cerebral Assassin, because that's all I've known. You know what I mean? But hats off to that man. Hats off to Shawn Michaels, too. He probably had a hand into it. Hats off to everybody in the NXT community, because you guys are pressing, pressing that threshold of wrestling up. Keep that shit going. That's basically all I had to talk about. Uh, I don't even want to talk about Raw. Only thing good on Raw is RKO Bro, or RK Bro, RK Bro, whatever you want to call it. That match, their match against the New Day was on some G1 classic stuff. Xavier Woods and Matt Riddle, amazing. Every time they get into the ring, they create a classic. And that's basically all I'm going to talk about from Raw. Everything else is trash. Like, Hell in a Cell this Sunday, it's going to be pretty boring. I can already tell you that right fucking now, cause who who's the person that signed Roman Reigns versus Rey Mysterio inside of Hell in a Cell? Let's just get straight to that. Like, why is that even a thing? Like, and then you got a uh, Drew McIntyre and Bobby Lashley for the fifty fiftieth eleventh eleventh time, and now the only difference is inside of Hell in a Cell. Who the fuck cares? You know what I mean? But hey, maybe towards SummerSlam it'll pick up. Maybe not. I don't know. I don't know what to say about Raw or SmackDown right now. They just need to get together. Well, that's all uh, for the review. Um, go ahead and uh, tell me what you thought about the NXT show or Raw or NXT in your house. Whatever. Tell me how you feel about Samoa Joe coming back because I am highly excited. Uh, let me know in the comments how y'all feel about these situations. Um, other than that, I'll see y'all next time. Y'all enjoy y'all. What rest of y'all week? And uh, hope I see you soon.